Annyeong! <laughs> Alright, so I hope the first two videos, 4.1, Understanding Thermal Equilibrium and 4.2, Understanding Specific Heat Capacity have helped all of you. So we are going to continue back with Form 4, Chapter 4, Heat, Understanding Specific Latin Heat, Subtopic 4.3. Alright, so at the end of this lesson or end of this video, you'll be able to state the transfer of heat during a change of phase does not actually cause a change in temperature. Define specific heat latin, right? This is supposed to be L. State that small l specific latin heat is equal to the heat absorbed or transferred over the mass. Determine the specific latin heat of fusion and vaporization and solve problems involving specific latent heat. So, are all of you ready? Let's start! Latent heat is the heat absorbed or the heat released at constant temperature during the change of phase. So, different from uh, heat capacity previously, heat capacity is the heat absorbed or released for the substance to increase the temperature by 1 degree. But over here, latent heat is heat absorbed or release at constant temperature during the change of phase. So here it will change of phase. So changing phase means what? Solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, and liquid to solid. So that's the change of phase. And it states here a constant temperature, which means that the temperature will not change in this case. So example, when solid melts, at its melting point, latent heat of fusion will actually be absorbed to change the liquid. For liquid to solidify back to solid, it is at the freezing point, so latent heat of fusion will be released. When liquid boils at its boiling point, latent heat of vaporization is absorbed so that it can become gas. But for gas or vapor condensed back to the liquid phase, latent heat of vaporization is released. So as you can see, from solid to liquid, heat is absorbed. Liquid to gas or vapor, it is also absorbed. But from gas to liquid, latent heat of condensation is released. Liquid to solid, latent heat is also being released. So these are the four main changes of phase. Solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, liquid to solid. Alright, latent heat. Four more common characteristics of the four processes in the change of phase. A substance undergo a change of phase at a particular temperature. The heat energy is transferred, either absorbed or released during the phase of change. During change of phase, temperature remains constant even though there is a transfer of heat. So these are the common characteristics. So let's say this particular heating curve. Why is it heating curve? Because the temperature is increases. This is a temperature versus time graph. So at point A, right, this is a condition where from A to B, it is remained at a state of solid. The temperature increases. Right, but solid is heated to its melting point at this part. So at point B, the solid will start to melt. From B to C, it exists in solid liquid state, whereby the temperature remains unchanged. And at point C, all the solid have already melted completely. So from C to B, it is in liquid state, the temperature continues to rise. So the liquid is heated until the boiling point. But once again, when it reaches D, it will start to boil. Liquid starts to boil at this particular point. So from D to E, when liquid is boiling, it will exist in both liquid and gas condition, but the temperature remains unchanged. And at point E, all right, liquid has boiled completely. So from E to F, it is at gas state, all right, gases state the temperature will continue to rise. The temperature of gas will increase to the temperature of the source. So if you notice one thing, when there is an increase in temperature, it only exists at one state, either solid, liquid, or gas. But if it's the temperature is fixed, constant, all right, it exists in both 
condition. So this exists in solid and liquid, over here liquid and gas. So remember, at constant temperature, it exists in two uh, states, two types of phase, either solid and liquid or liquid and gas. Alright, this is another temperature time curve, but if you notice, the temperature is reducing, so this is called a cooling curve. So at the first part, from P to Q, it is that the gas state, but the temperature drops. So the temperature decreases as heat is released to the surrounding. From point Q, that is when the gas starts to condense. So it exists in both liquid and gas condition, right, whereby from Q to R, gas is condensing, and at point R, the gas has condensed completely. So at this part, liquid and gas exist at the same temperature. So and then after that, from R, once the gas has condensed completely, from R to S, it exists as a liquid state whereby the temperature decreases, the liquid is continued to cool until its freezing point. So at point S, right, the, sol the liquid starts to freeze, right, whereby it exists at both solid and liquid condition. Okay, the liquid is freezing at S to T and finally at T, the liquid freezes completely. And finally, from T to U, it remains at the state of a solid, but the, uh, the temperature com continues to decrease. Sorry about that. The solid is cooled to the room temperature. So again, when the temperature drops, only one state is existing, gas, liquid, or solid. But when the temperature is fixed, it exists in two states, which is so, uh, gas and liquid, or liquid and gas. Alright, now let's find out why does the temperature remains constant during change of phase. Because just now we noticed that at a constant temperature, there's two different change of phase. Uh, it exists in two different kind of state. But uh, first one thing we want to know why the temperature remains constant. So during the change of phase, the transfer of heat does not cause a change in the kinetic energy of the molecules because during melting, for example, the heat absorbed is used to break up the bonds between the particles. So the particles are freed from their fixed position of solid and are able to vibrate even greater to move among themselves. Like for example, another part is when uh, the liquid boiling, right? When liquid ball, the heat is absorbed, is used to completely break the bonds between the particles of the liquid and also to do work against the atmospheric pressure when the gaseous vapor expands into the atmosphere. So this is the reason why that the temperature does not change during the phase of change. Alright, now let's go to more details. Specific Latin heat, small l. Okay. Specific latent heat is the amount of heat required to change the phase of 1 kg of substance at a constant temperature. This is a general uh, statement or definition for specific latent heat. Right? It changed the phase of 1 kg of substance at a constant temperature. So the keyword here is constant temperature. So the formula of small l specific latent heat is the amount of heat required divided by mass m. So unit for specific latent heat is joule per kg, whereby Q is the latent heat absorbed or released by the substance, m is the mass of the substance. So example number one, specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change 1 kg of substance from solid to liquid phase without a change in temperature. So fusion is from for solid to liquid without a change in temperature. The other specific latent heat is specific latent heat of vaporization. So it is the amount of heat required to change 1 kg of substance from liquid to gaseous state phase without a change in temperature. So fusion is for solid to liquid, vaporization is from liquid to gas. So example over here, Alright, specific latent heat of fusion of ice is 336,000 joule per kg. This means that I will need 3,000 
sorry, 336,000 joule of latent heat in order for 1 kg of ice to melt become water at 0 degrees Celsius. Another example is specific latent heat of vaporization of water is 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6 joule per kg. This means that if I want to change 1 kg of liquid to 1 kg of gas, I will need 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6 joule of latent heat to change from water to vapor at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So this is actually what does the specific uh, Latin heat means. Alright, summarize one thing. Okay, formula to calculate, we have three formulas so far for specific heat, uh, Latin heat or specific heat capacity. So the condition to use this formula. Q equals to mc theta. We use it when heat is added or removed. And change of the temperature of an object, we use... The heat calculated is actually uses Q equals to MC theta when there's a change in temperature. Q equals to PT is if the heat is supplied electrically. Q equals to ML is when heat added or removed, there is a change of phase of the object at constant temperature. We use Q equals to ML. So remember Q equals to PT is for P when power of the heater with the unit of watts. T is for the time recorded, the unit is in seconds. So there's three formulas over here. This particular uh, electrical heat that is supplied can equals to MC theta. It can also be equals to Q equals to ML, depending on the conditions of the question. So again, let's try a few questions. Specific Latin heat of fusion of ice is 336,000 joule per kg. What is the quantity of heat required to melt 2.5 kg of ice at 0 degrees Celsius? So, information, we need to have ice temperature 0 degrees Celsius to water at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Temperature is the same, but different state, isn't it? So, information provided, specific latent heat of fusion of ice. I got it from down here, actually. L is equals to 336,000 joule per kg. Mass M is 2.5 kg. Temperature constant at 0 degrees Celsius. So, which formula do I have to use looking at this information? Yes, that is actually Q equals to ML, where M is the mass, 2.5. Specific latent heat of fusion is 336,000. So the heat required is 840,000 of joules. Right, let's try another question now. An electric kettle contains 3 kg of water. Calculate the amount of heat required to boil away all the water for after the boiling point has been reached. So, water at a temperature of theta is 100 degrees Celsius. We want to change to vapor. Temperature theta equals to 100 degrees Celsius. Why do I know vapor? Because it says that boil away all the water. So information provided, specific latent heat of vaporization. Again, I got it from down here. L equals to 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6 joule per kg. Mass M is 3 kg using the formula Q equals to ML. Right, mass is 3, specific Latin heat is 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6. Using your calculator, and I will get the answer 6.78 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. So this is actually how you find it. Q equals to ML, remember, different phase, the phase change, but the temperature is the same. Okay, let's try another question, shall we? Alright, this question seems to be very simple because why? It's only one sentence. But let's see whether the calculation is that simple. What is the quantity of heat that is required to convert 4 kg of ice into steam at 100 degrees Celsius? So, simple isn't it? But let's see. State ice, mass 4 gram. Oh, it's 4 gram, not 4 kg. My fault. Alright, mass is 4 gram. Temperature at T equals to 0 degrees Celsius. 
you want to change the steam with clean from ice it has to become water mass 4 gram temperature t equals to 0 degrees celsius i have to use heat absorbed during melting q1 equals to ml then from 0 degrees celsius i have to heat up the water until 100 degrees celsius same state still water but the temperature changes so i have to heat absorb our water using q equals to mc theta because that's the change in temperature now finally water at 100 degrees celsius i want to change it to steam so water to steam mass is still 4 gram the temperature still 100 degrees celsius so over here we use the heat absorbed during vaporization Q3 equals to ML. Simple question, but this working is very long, isn't it? But it's actually very simple. How? The heat required is heat absorbed during melting, plus the heat absorbed by the water to change the temperature, and the heat absorbed during vaporization. So which means Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So Q1 is the mass multiply by specific latent heat of fusion plus Q2 which is mass multiply a specific heat capacity of water and the change in temperature theta 100 minus theta 0 plus mass multiply by specific latent heat of vaporization so substituting all the values in 0 0.004 because 4 gram I have to change it to kg multiply by Specific heat of fusion, latent heat of fusion, 336,000. Multiply by this, plus 0 0.004 times 4.2 exponential 3. Multiply by change in temperature, 100 minus 0, plus 0 0.004 times 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6. This is the specific latent heat of vaporization. So, Please key this into your calculator carefully and you will get 1 Q1 is 1,344, Q2 is 1,680, plus Q3 9,040. So add these three values together, I get 12,064 joules. So this is how you actually get it. Right, if you still don't understand, Please try to rewind back and listen again to my explanation. Alright, let's go to the application of specific latent heat. First application, drinks can be cooled by adding in several cubes of ice. Why? When ice melts, a large amount of heat is absorbed and this lowers the temperature of the drink. Okay. Number two is cooling off, keeping the freshness of the fish. The freshness of fish and meat can be maintained by placing them in contact with ice. With its larger latent heat, ice is able to absorb a large quantity of heat from fish as it melts. Therefore, thus, food can be kept at a low temperature for an extended period of time. Third example is steaming fish. Water has a large specific latent heat of vaporization. This property enables steam to be used for cooking by method of steaming. When steam condenses on the food, the latent heat is released directly onto the food, enables the food to be cooked at a faster rate. The last application, all right, it's always being careful when opening the lid of a pot when the water is boiling. Water has a large specific latent heat of vaporization. When steam condenses on the skin of your arm, a very large amount of latent heat is released and can actually cause a serious burn. So these are the four applications of specific latent heat that we use in our daily lives. So that's the end of chapter 4.3, Understanding Specific Latent Heat. I hope you actually understand, right? Please wait for the next and last part of this chapter, which is understanding gas law. So that's all from this particular video. Bye!